Hello and good evening, everyone. This is Dwayne Fernandez, your host for this Cut Short and Glory live stream today. Uh, we've done this quite a few times in the past, and we're here today because another edition of the India Poker Championship Final Table Series is about to get underway. We're like uh, a day away from the start of the series. Um, 10 to 19th September are the dates for the Final Table Series. Um, FTS 3.0, right? This is the third edition of the final table series on Spartan Poker. And across the 10 days of this series, we've got a massive rupees 12 crore guarantee lined up for players from across the country. Apart from just the prizes, though, there are quite a few goodies that uh, players can play for. There are the gold and silver medallions that have been there right from the first season of the final table series. And of course, for the main event winner, it's a diamond-studded gold medallion up for grabs as well. This The series on Spartan Poker first kicked off last year in November. And since then, it's only got bigger and better. And uh, as usual, once again, the featured tournaments will be live streamed across social media platforms. Talking about the live streams, though, we've got an elite set of commentators who will be commenting live on the action. And... Uh, before I uh, before I bore you bore you any further, let me quickly get them onto the stream today as our guests. And uh, just a second before we uh, we introduce them, let me also remind you that for all of those who are tuning in today, for all of our viewers, we have a giveaway contest that will be announced sometime during the stream. So stay tuned. Everyone watching is eligible to take part and win some tournament tickets. So. Uh, right, let's get let's get to the stream today, and uh, let's quickly call on our first guest, who is uh, who's who's got quite a lot of achievements in both live and online poker, and I may not have the time to list them all down today, but uh, he's uh, he's got he's got two World Series of Poker bracelets, and uh, including six dollar uh, six million dollars in in live tournament caches. So, uh, everyone, please welcome Kevin McPhee to the stream today. Hello, thanks for having me today. Hi, Kevin. Nice to see you after a while. <laughs> nice to see you too. So so the first time you were with us for the FTS, you were based in Canada, if I'm not wrong. And uh, I've been following you on social media since then. And you've just been like all around the place. So so where where, where in the world are you tuning in from right now? Uh, yeah, well, it's uh, been an adventurous, you know, last year for sure. And like they say, a rolling stone gathers no moss. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm uh, kind of a nomad here. And uh, I was in Canada for about six months. I made it through the ski season. And then uh, I went back home to visit my family for a couple months. And then I moved to New Orleans right before mm -hmm. Hurricane Ida came. And so uh, we have been relocated. And mm -hmm. I'm right now in uh, Ocean Springs, Mississippi. So <laughs> we'll, we'll I have been have around a few more questions, definitely about the, the, the hurricane and stuff that you've been uh, going through over the last uh, week or so. But uh, before we get that, let, let me quickly get on our next guest for today. It's someone that you've worked with and uh, we've all uh, had a lot of fun with uh, over the last few series of the final table series. Um, actor and poker player from the UK, uh, one of my favorites. Uh, guys, welcome Sam Razavi as well. Hey, Hello, Sam. <laughs> how's it going? Good to see you guys again. Same here, same here. Sam, how how excited are you to see people get another go at the medallions? I'm just excited to see people, let alone see them get medallions <laughs> after after being in lockdown for so long. But yeah, really, really excited. It's been nearly two years since I've you know played a live tournament now. So just anything that I'm involved in poker wise gets me excited. So. Right, right. So, so you two guys have have worked together uh, on the FTS, but we have a new uh, guest on the commentator pa panel for us, and I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce her as well. Uh, she's an Olympia topper, and uh, she started playing poker while uh, doing her her MBA in college, and uh, she's played a she's played a very crucial role in the Chennai Troopers in the recent Poker Sports League season three. And uh, she's also played for the Jaipur Jewels for all the seasons of the match IPL. Uh, let's welcome Mahima Walia Das to the stream as well. Hi, guys. Very excited to be a part of this. 
Hi, Mahima. Mahima, you've you've not done a commentary gig in the past, am I right? Yes, I have. Any any uh, first time jitters for you, or are you are you have you got this? Uh, absolutely, there are jitters, uh, but I think I'll uh, look forward to this as uh, any other conversation, and a lot to learn from all of you guys. So yeah, looking mm -hmm. forward to that. Right. So, so Sam and Kevin, I'll, I'll, let me tell you a little bit about uh, Mahima. Uh, from, she she works for a few startups and she calls herself a recreational player as such. But uh, she she's really got a thing for like big titles. You know, she's won like the uh, India Online Poker Championship High Roller. She's also won the Millionaire United. And these are like some of the biggest flagship tournaments on Spartan Poker. You know, with twenty lakh and above scores. So. Uh, how do you what do you think she needs to do when do you think she needs to start considering taking it more seriously going pro maybe sounds like she's already taken it pretty seriously <laughs> she's won more tournaments than i have in the last couple of years <laughs> yeah she's managed to run the biggest bluff of all uh, convincing everyone she's a recreational player while she's taking down these big titles so yeah but well done great 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 work thank yep, you yeah so, uh, Sam, we, we spoke a few days back and you mentioned and you said it right now also that you've not been playing a lot of uh, poker. I mean, live, I don't think a lot of people have been playing, but you said you've not even been playing a lot of online poker of late. So, so what's been happening with you if not, if not poker? Yeah, um, what I've really been doing is just focusing on, I, I set up, because uh, I, you know, I have a passion for cooking and during the start of lockdown, me and one of my brothers set up a, uh, kind of a, a, a food delivery thing on Uber Eats, uh, kind of taking advantage of my other brother's restaurant where we can cook from. So that's doing really well now. And it's got, you know, consistent five star rating on Uber. So I've left that in the hands of trusted <laughs> staff. Uh, so we'll see if that still exists when I get back. But um, yeah, I haven't managed to play online. I won't go into much detail, but it's getting quite hard to actually play online these days with regulations you know mm -hmm. once you deposit more than ten dollars they try to lock your account and <laughs> so you can prove where your money comes from and blah 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 so yeah i haven't haven't ventured right. too far into that right and uh, uh kevin kevin you mentioned about uh, the hurricane ida right so um i, I like for all of you watching I, I i want to tell you that kevin was nearly had to cancel not just today's stream, but you know, he was probably not going to be a part of the final table series itself because it's been a little bit of a tough time for him. So, Kevin, tell us what's happened and and how it's been over the last week or so. Uh, yeah, well, I I moved down to New Orleans to expand my gambling horizons into other avenues besides just poker, and uh, uh, moved down there about a little more than a month ago or something right in the French Quarter, beautiful, beautiful apartment office that I was uh, working out of. And yeah, a hurricane came through and it was more powerful than Katrina. The levees held this time, but uh, pretty, pretty scary stuff. Uh, I was going to stick it out through the hurricane. All of my friends there were, oh, it's no big deal. The media blows it up. And then I wake up one morning and it's like, oh, it's a category four hurricane. It's more bit that's bigger than Katrina, which devastated the city. And uh, uh, I immediately got a flight out. Um, couldn't even book a flight online, actually. So I just I woke up and it was they said 150 mile an hour winds were coming. And I just went to the airport and uh, <laughs> couldn't get a flight out to anywhere. So it was, uh, I went to four different counters before I could finally get a flight to Milwaukee of all places. So I went to Milwaukee for a week and then uh, I have flown back to the Gulf area and now I'm in Mississippi and also expanding my gambling horizons here. But uh, I did get a chance to play some live poker down in New Orleans before the hurricane came. It was my first time since LAPC in uh, January of 2020. So it felt nice to actually hold some chips and cards again. They definitely know how to gamble down in the South. They love their pot limit Omaha and it's it's been some good action. There's a lot of gamblers down here. So it was fun. We avoided Ida. Uh, we should be able to get back into New Orleans hopefully this week, but it's been a slow process. The whole city lost power and uh, yeah. No internet, so yeah, I'm in. 
I'm in Mississippi for the first time ever. So staying in Airbnb. So forgive my background. I it's <laughs> really, really small cottage here. So right, right. Uh, Mahima, are you, are you with us? I think you had just dropped out for a second. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, so Mahima, oh, it's your first time, first time in the final table series, first time uh, as a commentator. So, what will what what will the what should the viewers expect from you? What kind of a flavor or style are you going to bring to the live streams? Sure. So, uh, I genuinely think I'm the new here. Um, I'm going to try and follow what these guys are trying to do, and then probably ask the right set of questions so that all our users and audiences also understand. What's the gameplay about the vice behind a particular move? Uh, so I think, yeah, that's what I'm going to focus on primarily. Right. And uh, so, okay, we have a few more questions, but like before we go ahead, we mentioned a contest for the viewers. So, uh, uh, guys, for the special giveaway today, we have one simple question and uh, it's super simple actually uh you guys have to name one of the commentators from the previous uh final table series and uh, answer in the comments and tag two friends and get ready to win a ticket we will announce one lucky winner to fts feast day one which will take place on the 10th september at 4 pm that is tomorrow at 4 pm so the question again is to name one commentator from the previous final table series um like this that's like super simple i i i hope no one gets this wrong um yeah we have two of them on the stream itself so uh right so sam uh let's let's uh talking about the previous series i think uh everyone was like super super hooked on to your uh the donald trump video that you created for the last <laughs> final table series i think i think i've personally watched it like 20 times myself and uh uh, can you please, please, please give us a line or two from that from that video again? Oh, from that? That's Donald Trump? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if I remember how to do Donald Trump now, but uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, the, the series is going to be a wonderful series. It's a fantastic series. We've got a, we've got a, a two-time World Series of Poker Bracelet winner. He's down in Mississippi. And... Uh, I think it's going to be fantastic. The only thing they don't have is the uh, orange bracelet, which I was, uh, which is a fantastic bracelet, a wonderful bracelet, and uh, I can't, I can't do Donald Trump anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you're doing it pretty well. <laughs> ever since, you know, ever since he was ousted, I've tried to, uh, you know, tried to forget he even existed. So. <laughs> Who's your new favorite after Donald Trump now? If you had to, if you had to pick one, if you had to imitate one. If I had to pick, what, like a politician or just... Like uh, if someone who, who if, if you had to imitate someone, who would that be right now? Someone who you think is there, out there in the limelight? Uh, oh, out there in the limelight? Damn, that's really that's put me on the spot. It would uh, probably... I don't, I, I don't know. In the limelight or in the past? Characters. I can't even begin to think. I mean, I had, I had ordered some costumes to do a bit of a... Of an Austin Powers and Doctor Evil spin-up, you know. Welcome to the uh, final table series again, okay, Scott? Scotty Duke, okay? Yeah, baby, yeah. <laughs> about uh, ten years or fifteen years away from the limelight. Um, yeah, I had some trouble trap. Like I, I, I ordered these costumes to do some skits, and then I had to, because of all the traveling, I had to like hop to Spain. Now I'm in Mexico, and. Uh, I haven't managed to get those skits sort of done. So I'm trying to, I'm staying with my brother and his girlfriend. So we're trying to get some, get some stuff fast tracked out here. Yeah, we, so, we, we, we hope to see that soon, hopefully. Like, and, yeah. and that's just Sam Razavi for you, everyone. Like, you, I think we're going to see a lot more of this over the next uh, couple of weeks, maybe. And uh, so, so basically, this is something that my team asked me to, to include in the, in the stream since September is like the, uh, it's it's been a good month for like new releases on OTT platforms and stuff like that. So I think we've had uh, the money money high season five uh, released recently, and I'm assuming you guys have also uh, watched this. Uh, no. When again? The money heist. The money heist. Yeah. 
Ah, Money Heist. I have not seen that yet. I hear it's very popular in, in India, though. Right, like, all yeah. of my friends were talking about it. So yeah, that I just like, was released like a week ago. But uh, regardless, so if, if I had to ask the three of you all if there was one location or casino around the world that you would want to conduct a heist, what would that, which place would that be? If you're going to conduct a heist? Yeah. Wow. Well, the one with the most money on the table, obviously. <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking <laughs> that, or that god awful one in Prague, just so it doesn't, <laughs> so it can get closed down. Um, but uh, yeah, it would have to be obviously the one with the most money, or a balance, I guess. Um, the one with almost the most money, but maybe a bit, a bit more lax in security. <laughs> yeah, and Mahima, you, any any place comes to mind? If not a casino, it has to be one of the casinos in Vegas, uh, not really played live as much to maybe speak up of a name, but uh, I think that's the most logical choice here. Yeah, Bellag Bellagio, right? Because that's that's where the motorcycle bandit got busted. And if and if he got busted, then it would be epic if you could outdo the motorcycle bandit, right? And they have a lot of money on the table in Bellagio, so that would probably be my answer. Plus, it's a quick exit. You hop on Flamingo and you're on the interstate in a second, right? So faster than you. any other casino. <laughs> I was going to mention that the same place, but I thought, you know, you're going into some detail. I'd be careful who's watching this. Cause yeah, I, I think you only not. got half of it. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. Right. And uh, another another show that we had uh, uh, or is about to release, I think, is Lucifer season six. Uh, have you guys tuned into that one or no there either? No. Right, Lucifer, so I watched two seasons of, but I, I didn't realize we were already on season six. That's that's yeah. crazy. I knew that I knew that show blew up. I actually quite enjoyed the first two seasons, but yeah, I, uh, think, I think I dropped it at some point. I think I might, might have got about as far as you. I got to, I think it was the second season where they go to some big dinner or something and Lucifer appears and I don't know. But yeah, I, I sort of finished watching after a couple of seasons. I, was, I didn't even know it was still running, to be honest. But uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I honestly haven't watched a single episode, but uh, everyone in the team here wanted me to bring this up. And since season six is up here, they wanted me to look you guys in the eye and ask you this this question that Lucifer does ask his people. I really don't think I'll be able to pull it off because I really can't even look into your eyes right now. I just have to look into my camera screen. But uh, what is it that you truly desire? The, to the three of you. Adventure. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I truly desire is... Uh... My precious. <laughs> I am stuck in my parents. <laughs> of course. I mean, what else would it be? It's been close on to three years now. I still haven't had a sniff of it. So, but yeah. <laughs> right, we, we had, uh, Mahima, what about you? One thing that you truly desire? Oh, I think Mahima is having a little bit of a. Yep, she's having a little bit of an internet connection. But uh, Sam, here yeah, we we have. Uh, uh, I think you guys spoke to Siddharth Karya the last time he was uh, um, on one of the streams as well. So he's he ended up walking away with that uh, diamond-studded gold medallion. So have you had have you had a chance to have a conversation with him after that? I haven't yet, but um, was Siddharth uh, the one that sort of offered? Uh, Offered me, off, offered up uh, his his uh, medallion in exchange for a, a dance video. Yep, again, that's <laughs> I tried to do that while I was in Mallorca with my sister, and it didn't transpire. But over the next <laughs> day or two in Mexico, on, if we can get down to the beach, I'm going to get my brother to help me film that. Yeah. So, for everyone watching, there's this there's this uh, Bollywood song uh, called "Hi Garmi," and. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not going to give it away, but uh, we have Sam who's going to be uh, in a dance-off video with uh, with Siddharth Karya. And trust me, I I think everyone's just waiting to to see that out there. <laughs> it's something that you, you it's yeah. going to be fun. That's all I can say. <laughs> it's 
see what happens yeah. <laughs> right so uh mahima you you're back you you can hear us right now yes i am back yes i think you were just cut off for a bit so uh, mahima coming back to uh, uh, the the fts you you've played with a lot of top indian players online like like i said you you like you won a few big tournaments as well so um you've played in the fts as well so who are who would be your top picks who who you think would do well uh, in this fts 3.0 okay uh, so there's definitely a huge list to this uh, the quality of players increasing improving day by day in our country so of course my husband to begin with uh, i've been learning poker from him so that goes without a say uh, then i'm also quite a fan of anand purohit uh, review session okay i think a slight lag here so uh, kanchan is quite... talking about her husband guys her husband anirban das is also one of the the top players online you know he's every every week he's got a couple of titles if 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 not more so uh so yeah i think he will also be someone to to watch out for he goes by the username poker noob if i'm not wrong so uh hopefully we might see him as well on um i remember that name mm -hmm. yeah didn't he make like three final tables in the last series I, so I'm, I'm not too sure uh mahima did uh, anirban make a few final tables for the last series he did yeah right so yeah so yeah pokenoob is someone we'll be we'll be watching out for again so yeah sam and kevin you've also you've also been around for like two seasons before so any particular players that you remember or any usernames that you that who who you like the gameplay of and who you think will be back again on our final tables well i mean i'm i'm looking forward to seeing some of my uh my friends i made when i was out in india and the, the friends i made in my travels competing again i mean sid Carrier, um you know i think kartik ved i'm going to keep an eye on for sure uh and the rest of my teammates from team goa uh i mean there's just uh, so many talented indian poker players you know and like we had a really nice time a lot of good action last last time around so I, i'm kind of like looking forward to just seeing a lot of the same screen names again you know but uh it's not to, it's hard to not be biased when i when i go out to goa and we, and take down the psl with my teammates to want to always kind of root for them and, and sid karia is probably the the top guy I'm going to be looking out for, as well as the rest of my teammates as well. You know, I mean, we had a really, really talented team. So, uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to, just, you know, doing some commentary and watching some poker. It's like, like I miss poker. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. So Mahima Karya is also the defending champion of the uh, FTS main event. So, uh, do you think he's also going to be one of the favorites for the series? absolutely uh, one of the most talented guys across here um, as well and uh, did a brilliant job even in the psl season that i played together so definitely looking forward to see him play and well. right and uh, the so the series has a, a, a tagline uh, hashtag game beyond limits so i just want to know one story or anecdote from each of you guys where you know you took your poker game uh, beyond limits some a day you went the complete extra mile or five extra miles uh anytime online live whenever <laughs> i mean there's so many in my career you know the i mean the most obvious answer is i won the european poker tour in 2010 that was robbed you know and <laughs> had to have the room evacuated when there was 20 people left wow. and i would i would say that uh you know that was a little jarring when you're playing for such high stakes you're playing we were playing for a million euros and we had guys with machetes and masks come in and pull off their own money heist, heist. <laughs> right in the middle of the tournament so uh that was you know you saw a lot of players come back from that and then kind of not adjust properly or be bothered by it and, uh, in fact i was kind of shocked at the time that we even continued the tournament that day you know i thought it should be delayed a day and uh uh, so I guess that's the most obvious answer, but you know, the the battle is always in your own mind in poker. You know, I always say that my my biggest opponent at the table is always myself. You know, so 
Um, it's just, it's always that struggle, you know, to try to, to make sure you're bringing your A game and, you know, that's all you can try to hope to do. And maybe you don't always do it, but you know, you gotta, you gotta be tough and you gotta be ready to have the trial by fire, you know? Right. Right. And, and, uh, so we've, we've been talking about how no one's been playing a lot of live poker, but, uh, with the WSOP coming up and you've won a couple of bracelets in the past two have you got any plans for the upcoming series? Uh, you know, I I almost never miss the online series. You know, uh, I was living in Vegas, and last year I played both uh, the World Series online on the Nevada client, and then also went and played the international stuff. Um, but this is the first year I skipped it, and this is the first year. You know, we didn't have the World Series going on during the summer. Obviously, we had last year, but uh, with it being pushed back to October. I just, you know, I, I decided I'd skip a bunch of online things and focus on family time. It's my first time to be at home on the lake, with my family in years. And uh, yeah, I mean, I just don't know what my plan is for the World Series yet. You know, I'm kind of taking it one day at a time. I think I'll probably be out there, but, you know, it's going to be uh, a weird one this year, I think. You know, there's a lot of... Uh, vaccine mandate. I think the field size will be a little bit smaller. There's some travel restrictions coming in. And um, if there's every year where I skip like more live bracelet events, it's probably going to be this one just because I have some more opportunities going on. It's kind of hard to leave these like juicy PLO games down here, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> and we have a question from the team internally as well. Uh, where Where is the beard gone? Well, I mean, it's coming back, you know. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, like I said, I've been relocated for, for a bit there. And, uh, you know, you just kind of, you're living out of your suitcase and you're hopping on a flight to Milwaukee to avoid a hurricane. And I just, yeah, I was feeling kind of scruffy. So I just shaved it all off on kind of a whim the other day. But uh, I'm sure it'll be back by the end of this series. I and mean, we've got a lot of poker action ahead of us in 10 days and... This, this little, uh, you know, shadow is going to turn into more of a beard by the end, no doubt. Right, right. So, Sam, uh, on the same topic of uh, not of beards of of, of the WSOP, <laughs> what are what are what are your plans for? I think you've already uh, 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 traveled to Mexico right now, if I'm not wrong. And uh, yeah. um, what's your plan for the series, basically? Well. Yeah, not to go into too much detail because I don't know with social media and all this and that. But yeah, it's not easy to get to Vegas from the UK. Uh, so I'm just sort of spending a bit of time in Mexico and then we're going to see, you know, as long as I can get in um, to the US, then yeah, I'm going to be there from the around the 28th of um, September. Touch wood with everything, you know, being okay with COVID and, and you know, I've still got some money left after a couple <laughs> of weeks, a particularly long series. This, I think it's an extra couple of weeks. Um, um, but I'm planning to, yeah, be there till the end for 20, whenever the last event is, I think it's the 23rd of November. And then, yeah, and then fly back probably, you know, with lots more gray hair and maybe a, a scruffy beard as well. Lots more money as well. Well, hopefully. <laughs> yep. And, uh, right. So, so, um, yeah. So, uh, this is usually the part where we, you know, try to get some, uh, knowledge and some tips from our panelists for the players who are watching. So, uh, Mahima, uh, you since you've won a couple of big uh, tournaments, can you give us uh, our, our, our viewers a couple of tips on, let's say, three things that players should do uh, if you want to win one of the uh, FTS feature tournaments? Mahima, you can you with us? Yeah. Um, sorry, I was disconnected in between. I'm going to change my room for the next session that we have uh, right. could you please repeat yeah yeah so i said like this is usually the part of the stream where we you know try to get some tips from our commentators from the panelists so um 
with the FTS starting tomorrow uh, and you have won a few big tournaments on Spartan Poker in the past, so what would you uh, give uh, three tips to our viewers on how to win one of the upcoming FTS feature tournaments? Sure. Uh, so I'll speak about my strategy, how I typically end up, end up playing the game. So uh, firstly, the initial state, stages are pretty standard for any player. Uh, not a lot of difficult or tough calls to take then, especially when it's the rebuy period. So optimize for building your stack then because uh, that's going to help you in the later stages. Uh, next, depending on what kind of stack you've built, your gameplay drastically changes. Uh, typically, an aggressive player, but um, not a loose player. So tight aggressive is the approach I end up taking and it has been in my favor so far. So that's um, another thing to look out for. And patience, of course, is the most important aspect. Okay. And and Sam, would you like to tell us three things that one shouldn't do if they want to win? Um, well, they, they shouldn't call when they're behind. Uh, okay. Shouldn't fold when you have the nuts. <laughs> no, I mean, um, I think being a bit more serious, I think um, you, sh you shouldn't you shouldn't go you shouldn't play the whole session all day and then and then uh, straight after the tournament, uh, especially if you made the final, jump on to cash games and stay up the, the whole night and, and, and uh, minimize uh, your your rest because it's very easy just to you know, especially if you make a final, you're sort of on a on a high, on a buzz. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, you don't want to go to to bed straight away. Usually, what I do or used to do is probably probably really bad. Is just carry on playing, you know, throughout the night. Um, so, I definitely just make sure you, you you have plenty of rest. Schedule a tournament. You know, don't don't play if you're not feeling you know 100. Um, percent And yeah, I'm trying to think of, yeah, that's it, you know, just, just give it your best. Right. And uh, Kevin, you'd like to add anything to that? Any tips for the players? Yeah, I mean, just always sit down, try to pre pre uh, prepare to play your A game, really, you know, have a nice meal, you know, do your routine, hang out, hang out with your, you know, family if you need be. But uh, once you sit down, you need complete focus, you know, at the task at hand. So... Uh, really, you know, my old poker mentor used to say they should just call it paying attention because that's really what most of what poker is. So even the hands you're not involved in, uh, that's how you're going to get the reads on people on who's getting out of line or maybe who's playing too snug. You know, it's not just paying attention to the hands that you're in, but really being engaged in everything that's going on at the table and feeling that and, and uh, processing it all. So that when you get in a hand with one of those people, you can remember, oh, this is that person that, you know, maybe, you know, made that fold or hasn't been defending their big blind or made that crazy bluff, you know. So uh, that's always, you know, to, I, I like to keep things simple when I'm giving advice. And I think just paying attention, sitting down engaged and kind of having a map in your head of how long it's going to take to win the tournament, what blind level it's going to be at and knowing like kind of, you know, projecting yourself into that winning position. Um, and yeah, just pay attention. <laughs> right. I think everyone watching, you've got like a lot of tips from these three super good uh, poker players. And uh, you, you heard what Kevin said, it's pay attention. And I think you got uh, a few more tips from him. Uh, Earlier as well, he said the battle is all in your mind. So, uh, I mean, if you're watching, please pay attention, everyone. And uh, so the final table series starts tomorrow. And uh, I, 10 days, uh, 12 crore guarantee. I think everyone uh, uh, who's who's going to be a part of it is going to be aiming for those top prizes. And uh, uh, I think that's all we have for today. Sam, Kevin, Mahima, thank you so much for joining us. And... Uh, we're going to be seeing each other daily now when i'm going to be uh, uh, in touch with you guys daily and it, everyone's going to be watching you guys for the live streams as well so uh thanks for joining in today and uh mahima good luck to you for the series as well because you can be playing for the medallions unfortunately uh sam and kevin can't do that but uh, <laughs> but yeah i think in case you do go on to win one then uh you know maybe sam can uh, definitely get in touch with you after that so uh 
All right, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, final table series starts tomorrow. Everyone watching, please. Uh, uh, good luck, actually. And uh, once again, thank you for tuning in today. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck.